They are either homosexuals or murderers. They are not out of these two situations and the female characters of this movie are really special women. This movie is about a detective who falls in love with a beautiful lady with blonde hair named Catherine Telemann, played by Sharon Stone who is really beautiful and she wants to solve the case. But the beauty of this girl? It is a film noir. What are the characteristics of film noir? A crime has happened. There is a killer inside. There is a victim. It has lonely alleys, narrow and lonely alleys, wet alleys, and usually a beautiful woman who tries to seduce and betray the main character. This movie is a very beautiful movie. It is one of the best movies you've seen. If you're interested in this kind of movies and their analysis, I would be grateful if you give this video a like and subscribe to the Scene Psycho channel for more. Thank you. Now, let's go to a comprehensive analysis of this movie. Watching the movie analysis is the pleasure of watching the movie. Not just for this movie, but for the movies you see. With the unique performance of Sharon Stone, who plays the role of a seductive woman. A fetter woman. Let's talk about fetter women. The fetter woman here is a blind-haired, beautiful, and rich woman who fascinates, seduces, deceives, and betrays the main character. This is a motif. The motif is a recurring thing in noir films, especially in classic movies. When they wanted to show women as seductive, they wore a leopard-like dress, which is the origin of the leopard, and put a long blonde hair on her, which from the very beginning, the audience could see this woman is saying with a companion betrayal. This woman cheats with a man. You must have this from me. Why? Because I saw 10 of his previous films and you were a recurring motif. Of course, in the movies of the new era, these stereotypes are played with like a female fan of Fetter, and you can do something else with them, like a female fan of Fetter in the movie. Why? Because the audience likes it. They have seen enough of this, and now they want something new. Let's skip this. Let's go to Sharon Stone's game. From my point of view, a good character is a character that communicates with the audience. During this movie, we see that Sharon Stone's character, or Catherine's character, fools all the men. This is an event that the audience will notice outside of the movie. They feel it. When they put themselves in the place of men and see Sharon Stone's beauty, they fully understand it. If we even ignore Stone's beauty, her body language. You look at the stone's hands and eyes. It's as if she has men in her fist. When she's lighting her cigarettes and talking to Nick's character or other men, it's as if she has them like wax in her hand. They can't do anything. They cannot understand what is in her mind. But she knows what's in a man's mind. That's why she knows how to manage them, seduce them, use them. And when she writes their story, she throws them away like a piece of garbage. One of the most influential movie sequences is the sequence of Catherine's character, played by Sharon Stone, interrogating people at the police station. Pay attention in this sequence when it is showing Stone. The camera is zooming in on the men. Why does it zoom in on men? It is showing the men that Sharon Stone is influencing them. When the female character starts smoking, this is a sign of the beginning of seduction and influence. Immediately after Catherine's character starts smoking, we see that the camera zooms in on the men and places the men in two or more scenes and Catherine's character in one frame. In order to show that the force of none of these reaches the character of Catherine, that's why they show different frames. At the bottom right side, the character of Catherine is located and the rest is on the other side. You, as a viewer, feel that Catherine is being forced into this. And the dialogues that were said before this, the pressure on the right side of the image, the button right, is four times the pressure on the left side. Because you feel the image, Catherine has more power than others. Usually, when we want to show that a character is thinking, we show it with a smoke that gathers around him. When someone is desperate and stuck, and he doesn't know who the killer is, he smokes. When he is smoking, we see a lot of smoke around him. This shows that the character is busy, disorganized, and desperate. He was left wondering who the killer is, and on the other hand, the thought of Catherine's character has involved him. Well, anyone who was in this place would get involved. Music in classic movies is in line with the movie. What does it mean? That is, it is supposed to convey or identify the feeling of the main character. It means that a main character is happy and we are happy too. A character is afraid and we are afraid. Whatever happens, let it be exciting and let us feel it too. In this movie, when Nick and Catherine are flirting, pay attention to the music. 
It gives you a sense of liberation and fear at the same time. For this reason, the music of this film won an Oscar. This is not the case in modern films. For example, in the movie Lobster, this movie is so annoying. You seem to want to get up from the cinema seat and say, Hey, stop it! Why? Because there is a difference between modern music and classical music. Because the taste of a modern person is very different from the taste of a person who watches classical movies. I have to say this about Freud's theories. Freud believes that when girls are born, because they don't see their penis, it makes them feel empty. They feel that something is missing in them. It is even unconscious in them. For this reason, in horror movies, we usually see the character of the movie breaking the ice with an icebreaker. Ice is the same too. It is the same masculinity and maybe women feel less in their presence. Unconsciously, ice is a male object. Do you, for example, see the rock? No, but ice is a kind of fragile, but somehow it's like a man's body. The moment when Catherine is breaking the ice with the icebreaker, as if she is destroying the man. And a symbol of a male's penis. Because of this, you could see that the killer, whose name I will not mention now, killed each of the victims in a special way that was unique to them. That is, a person who was fat, killed by overeating and giving too much food. Why? Because this is your fault. For this reason, keep it in mind in the movies. Well, we come to the end of this movie. Maybe some people still don't know what happened at the end of the movie. At the end of the movie, Mrs. Liar was killed by Nick. She wants to take out her key and give it to Nick, the key to Nick's house. But Nick thinks she wants to take out her gun. She is called to that place by Catherine and by Nick himself and will be killed. And this is what Catherine had provided for her. Catherine, what is her job? Is the author. If you want to know a character, know there by their job. She is the author. She is the one who moves this story forward. She writes this story in such a way that he becomes a murderer. Mrs. Liar. And in the last shot, it shows a single shot of Nick under his bed. From an icebreaker, the instrument of murder, the thing with which they kill everyone. In the end, I have to say that this is Sin Psycho Channel and I'm really honored that you stayed with me until the end. If you are interested in these kinds of videos and have watched this video so far, thank you for hitting the subscribe bell to give us even more energy. Write us in the comment which part of this movie you found most interesting to you. Until the next time, bye!